All right, ladies and gentlemen, members and friends, it's that time of the month again where we're live for our virtual tasting with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Thank you so much for tuning in, those who are joining us live or those who are watching this back later. I'm not going to waste any time. You can see in the picture on your screen who's joining me tonight, no other than the other Matt. The two Matts, the Wooler, the Bailey, both live tonight. Here we go. Oofed. The hot one, the hot one. <laughs> the hot one. <laughs> yeah, that's this one on the top of your screen. And this one, let's do a bit of a swapsy like this. Ready? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. <So. laughs> uh, Matt Wooler, thank you so much for joining tonight. This is so all good. good. All good. Uh, March is all about unusual pairings. And we're getting a bit of an echo through your speaker, I think, at the moment. So Mine? Yeah, that's okay. Um, but we're getting a bit of um. How about that? I think we're good. I think we're good. Yep. Um, good to see you, Betty. Good to see you, Dov. Good to see everyone who's tuning in live, which is great. Um, who are joining in? You've got to have your packs. You can watch along if you don't have a pack. It's not much, not as much fun. But it's the unusual pairings pack, um, which you should all have in the mail. It was very popular, and once you open the pack, you'll see why. It's full of goodies. Like it's full of snacks. Now, it's hard shipping food. Uh, you know what? Any company that ships food around, um, I fully commend them because that's a whole different beast from shipping whiskey, which is easy. Yeah, it is. Comparison. Yeah. Um, we've shipped, we've done cheese packs before. We've done beer. We've done all sorts of um, other weird snacks and stuff in the time, in the past. Um, but shipping, um, finding foods that you're, you're pretty sure won't melt and or, um, you know, cause any problems with anything like that is is tricky. So... Uh, <laughs> there you go. That's my that's my uh, my rant. I was um, yeah. yeah. I I I don't know whether you remember many 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 years, probably about ten years ago, maybe even longer. There was the cured the guys that were doing cured meats at one stage. They mm. were shipping that stuff around. That was terrible. They would they would deliver it in the morning. Uh, just leave it at your front door, and you wouldn't know. Especially if you'd left for work or something, you'd get back in the afternoon. It would all be cooked in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Hard, hard, hard game. Very hard game. Well, I mean, look at the chocolate pairings we've done in the past with, with Krishna. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he, he knows that there's members in Tasmania who will receive the packs just fine. Mm -hmm. But members where he's based in Queensland, where it's quite hot, <laughs> it's like, you know, there's, there's going to be, the, he has to foil wrap them and um, well, ensure. You just need to do it in a tube, everything in a tube. It was like just liquid, liquid chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're watching, you've just been doing it wrong the whole time. Just liquid chocolate tubes, like those condensed milk tubes, but with chocolate. You know, yes. <laughs> I remember when condensed milk first appeared in a tube, and I was like, "That's dangerous." Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. no longer tins. You know, it was like um, mm -hmm. showing my age now, aren't I? Where I was like, "Oh, not everything comes in tins anymore." Okay, well, you could clean your teeth with it. That was the best thing. <laughs> and watch them fall out at the same time as you're cleaning your teeth. Like the, the the one hundred thousand percent sugar content in that. Mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. Well, we've got uh, I've got a cold beer. I've got some water, and we've got some drams, and we've got some snacks. I think I'm all set for tonight. I did not get a beer in my pack. No, there's no beers in the packs. I got a beer. I I, I got a beer yeah. before we started. I got a Coopers yeah. before we started. And now I want a beer. Okay. Mm. Okay, folks. There's lots of comments coming in, which is great. Um, yeah, the WA climate is a bit tough on some of the chockies as well. Yeah, 
uh, WA, NT, we, we don't have too many members in the NT. We've got about, I don't know, a dozen or so. And um, they're very, they're, they're, they don't they don't know if any of them got the chocolate packs, packs this, this year. Um, remember the Bruni Island cheese and whiskey virtual? That was bloody amazing. Bring back the cheese virtual. Corbin, mm. we, did some, we did some weird virtuals, um, especially throughout COVID. There were a lot of sort of like, you know, ones where they came with different cheese packs and different things and, uh, and the cheese one was was actually almost uh, the best mistake we ever made because it was like uh, you know, we, we, the che- uh, just for those playing along and who maybe not remember this, Corbin was there. But um, for those who weren't, the cheese, that Bruni Island cheese pack we did, the cheese maker from Bruni Island told us, oh, everyone's getting like, you know, everyone got a, a taste of each cheese, a, a sliver, a, a slice of each cheese to pair with each whiskey, which is all we asked for. But then um, our postage costs for for that send for whatever reason from from the cheesemaker we noticed were really high, and we're like, okay, that's a bit higher than we we're expecting on the postage costs here. They'd sent like five hundred grams of each <laughs> five cheeses to every member. Goodness, so everyone got like two and a half kilos of cheese. It was like five hundred grams to pair with each sample of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, everyone got really good value because everyone got like literally about two hundred and ten dollars worth of cheese for in a hundred and twenty dollar cheese pack. It was it was a uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, Unfortunate cool. for those that were lactose intolerant though. They still ate the cheese, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that comment there, Cobbin, yeah, we got a lot of cheese. Yeah. There was a <laughs> lot of cheese in those boxes. Uh it was good fun. I mean, come on, yeah. Um, great idea, says Dov and Mark Teague. Good to see Mark Teague slash whiskey is my jam in the chat. Okay, guys, we're, uh, we've got a good mass of people joining at the moment live. We'll get a whole bunch more joining afterwards, of course, always. We do apologize for those who are on the West Coast who have to endure, what is it, 4 p.m. right now at the moment in Perth or something. So it's like uh, can't can't get every time zone and we're not starting this at 10 p.m. So let's pull out some of your snacks, get them on the table. You've got an, you've got an overhead view, haven't you, Willer? As well I do. Yeah, look at this. We've got snacks. We've got drams. I'm going to just bring up your screen. I'll full size it for a second. Here we go. Um, lots of things Lots of things going on in the table in front of us. There's no set rhyme or reason to the pairings tonight. Uh, we're just going to actually play around with this a bit and go through each dram in order from the menu. And I'm, we're going we're gonna to play it by ear a bit. We're gonna, the whole idea about these pairings is to... Actually, in order of the menu, so spicy and sweet first, you reckon? Yeah, we've got to try spicy and sweet. Time for a spring clean. We're going to start with that one. This is the, the menu order is correct, um, which is rare in my case because I'm the only one screwing that up in the menu before we before we go to print. So we'll pour those drams if you haven't already. Uh, I haven't. Them. This is all new to me tonight. I haven't tried any of these. Well, that's good. All right. Now... I used I, I chose a seventy three for this one time for a spring clean because uh, I think these seventy threes are hugely underrated. Um, Corbin, good to see you, mate. You can always listen in on the commute if you want. Just top, pop your phone on your lap and 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 follow along. Um, tr- tram drams or train train drams, I should say. Um, it depends how you commute. Maybe you don't want to drink and drive. Okay, but um, I chose this seventy three because. Uh, they're, I think they're hugely underrated. They're, they're the sleepers on an outturn. People go, oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's like a 10-year-old first Felix Bourbon barrel, Space Cider. Um, bring it up on screen. There we go. And I think they're hugely underrated. They're sweet, like white roses, mint, a bit of mint in there. I can't get it. It's a lovely, like, rose petal note to it. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Which snack do you think we should go with here? I reckon we go with... Um, oh, man. Well... Hmm. We've got a few options. There's eight options in front of you. I'm almost tempted for the choc chip cookies. Yeah. That could be that could be a go, actually. Let's go choc chip cookies. Let's go the Barnett's choc chip cookies. In case. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try a choc chip cookie with this. Actually, going to nose nose the biscuits. Mm, biscuit nosing. You know, I'm not going to name names because it's not it's not that kind of rant. But but I did notice recently. There's this uh, 
<coughs> ski influencer. I'll just put it that way. Someone who gets on on screen a lot, uh, who isn't me, <laughs> and does lots of video, and and every time he tests a whiskey that's just landed on his desk, I just I just saw a video like five minutes before we went live, and it was I just like, ah. Anyway, there's no nosing going on in his videos, mm. and so it's just like pause it and then just goes. It's like, well, you're, yep. you're missing. You're missing. I'd say two thirds of the experience straight away. He might be one of those people that actually doesn't can't smell. I've had I've had quite a few people come into tastings that don't have any sense of smell. Mm. Dov says that's what I went for. Yeah, I think the chocolate chip co- cookies, the chocolate chip cookies, I should say, with this one might be the go. Mm. Got the, they're both sweet. They both got their lovely sort of like sweetness and. Like floral sort of notes, bit of chocolatey, bit chocolatey as well. The spirit character from Distillery Seventy Three. It does. Of- it does remove the nose. Uh, the nose. The roses from the nose, though. The chocolate. Mm. It's sort of all all gone. Disappeared from the taste and the nose. Mm. But that's the that's the problem with. Well, not the problem, but that's pairings change things. That's the other thing. Mm. It's sort of like people always, even in tastings, I'm doing and things that. I talk about you know how do you how do you pair, and it's like well half the time you're not really pairing it you're pairing the experience, but it's really a, a flavor change, mm. and you got to got to accept that. Mm. I could pound those cookies though, that's for sure. Mm. Mm. There's, mm. there's the distillery from above. That's the aerial shot of the distillery. As best as I know, they don't have a um, visitor center. Um, they are purely, um, they're one of the sort of the workhorse distilleries really uh, of part of the, um, uh, I was about to say, yeah, the Bacardi family. I was about to say Jewers, mm-hmm. which is same, same thing. But, you know, mm. um, but yeah, it's a, it's a slow, slow distillate. So, it's a, it does create a heavier element to some of the spirit. I was going to say it's very oily, mm. very oily, very textured. Which is great. I mean, they, these single casks are just a great example of you know, richly textured Speyside single malt. And just call to say, again, I've said this a hundred times, if not more, call to taste something that doesn't get a whole lot of light shone on it from a single malt perspective. See, I'm not a. I don't. I don't go for the spicy and sweet that often. Uh, really? Even in just, yeah, it just sort of doesn't always fit. You know, if I'm buying, I normally mm. will just sort of switch off. It doesn't matter what distillery it is, what number of code it's getting. Uh, you'll normally just switch off from that, and then it's. I don't know. It's just my palate, I guess. Mm. No, fair enough. Yeah. I um. I go through. I go through phases. I think for every different profile. Hmm. There's ones that I lean towards at different times and different years or different seasons and whatever. Yep. I think spicy and sweet work really well in like spring and summer, like especially this kind of weather right now. Mm, that's lovely. That's lovely. So that's a 10 year old whiskey uh, and single cask. It's only 179. Um, it's available at the moment. All of these are available on the site. Um, I was going to sh- throw some shop links up, but I haven't actually, I'm not that organized. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 58.3. I was going to say it sort of felt a little bit lower. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to knock your socks off. It's, it's mm. good though. Unlike when I when I noticed, where is it? I noticed there was a rum. The first thing, my uh, mind still goes back to that rum we had at the uh, at the steps many many years ago. That seventy eight uh, percent, whatever it was. I know exactly which rum you're talking. Oh my about. goodness, that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we may as well tell the story. <laughs> I mean, it was oh, a rum. It was a. It was yeah, a- yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it was was it one of the first rums we got in Australia. It was only like maybe third or fourth release. It wasn't. We hadn't had many rums at that point. I don't think. No. no. And uh, I can remember everyone saving them up. For, saving themselves up for for the end of the night being steps you only had like eight choices yeah and most people that were saving themselves up for it sort of in a lot of ways instantly regretted it just simply not because it was bad it was just it was the it was insane it just attacked the palate 
just attacked it. I've never had a rum that intense ever. No, and I'm I'm I just my favorite memory of that exact rum was the uh, <laughs> I, I was so keen to taste it, so I actually tasted <laughs> it quite early on. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I tasted it very early on in the night, and I remember going, "Oh yeah, that's I'm ready for this. This is good." And I had I had quite a big pour of it from memory. Mm-hmm. And, I remember being, it being like 78.8% or 81.8% or something stupid like that. Yeah. I'm yep. thinking, oh, yeah, I can handle this. That's fine. You know, um, mm-hmm. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think anyone could. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was just way too, it was it was so big and it was just so like, um, but it was it was so lovely and visceral. Um, and I remember I, I remember raising the, the topic of those rums with, um, with our spirits director Kai, uh, many years later, and I said, "I th- those rums are, were pretty pretty up there in proof." And he goes, "Yeah, they, they were pretty." Uh, he called them, "Yeah, a bit irresponsible." <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't imagine what's what's the ABV for a, for a flight for a plane. What's the maximum it can get to? Uh, 70, 69.970. Right. Yeah. and these these were all high seventy, low eighty. Yeah. I think so the, the never highest one. It was 81.8, I think was the highest one of the highest society spirit I've ever seen bottle, 82.8, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. And they were they they were never they would never make it away onto a flight. They'd be considered a hazardous material. And yes. you know, there should have been a little sticker on those bottles that said not intended for human consumption. Really, when you think about it, it's like, you know, <laughs> not not suitable for humans. Because <laughs> I mean they were just they were so visceral, they'll just like knock your socks off. Um yeah. All right. I'm just trying that's, to that's trying a fun tiny teddy honey with this. See whether the honey oh, yeah. makes any difference. We'll see. There's a lot of biscuits. You gave us a lot of biscuits. There's a few biscuits to get through. Yeah. Mm. You know that works better. That works better. All right. Just, just sort of little little honey. Just deals with the malt. It doesn't hide some of those other flavors. That's that's cool. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh. Sounds like Everclear says Dov. Yeah, I mean it, it was mature, but the thing is, Dov, it was like it was actually they were all like 11, 10, 11 year old rums. They weren't young uh, in rum world. They were quite old. Um, but you know, with the the sugar content of rum pushes the spirit up in proof over time, way harder than it does to to barley. Um, cane sugar plays, plays very differently. All right, let's move on to sample number two. An absolute nut tur. Absolute uh, nut tur. Oh. Juicy open vanilla. Highland. What's its code again? 94. 94. Now, here's, here's the bottling on your screen right now, folks. Um, however, um, we had a recent 94 before this one, which looked a bit like this. In fact, it had Alex Moore's face on it. Um, <laughs> soiree with creme brulee in celebration uh, of the gathering from last year uh, in the spicy and sweet profile. But I was really excited to see this one come through, uh, a 94.25, obviously a little bit an earlier number, if you like, but because we pushed the 94.43 out earlier because we just the way it goes in the selection panel. But this is a full maturation 13-year-old in a second fill ex-bourbon barrel. So I'm going to that sample. I'll pour myself one. Oh, opening it. Clink. Now. I am. I, I've tasted this before. It is super, like, it is so nutty, which is in line with the distillate character out of Distillery 94. Now this isn't a distillery we get releases of, like no, as in like that's as in uh, like core range or yeah, core range OBs. Uh, no, there was a core range. It's one of those distilleries where there have been and have not been core range of this distillery on and off for like the last twenty years. And every time they reintroduce a core range, it's not very popular, and they mm-hmm. just, it just goes back into blending. It's part of the White and Mackay studio these days. Studio. So most of it goes into blending for White and Mackay. Mm-hmm. Which is a which used to have a Richard Patterson 
throwing whiskey around the room and saying hello to his glass. Mm-hmm. Throwing whiskey on everyone. Mm. Mm. That's great. Isn't it? Isn't it just a fantastic spirit? That has so much texture to it. Mm. And it does have that. Well, not. Uh, it's not that it tastes like nuts. It's just that it's got that. Oops. I don't know that peanut almond sort of texture about it, and earthy yep. and sticky. It's... Oh, I like that nose. Isn't it great? Um, oh, oh my goodness. How much is that? A bottle? 220, 13 year old. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you okay? Oh, I just look, I just Ooh. look at the price. And then I remember when, when the, uh, when the threes went over $200 right, on, right. and I'm just like, oh, you know, I don't know. It's going to make me question buying. <laughs> but um now I look at this and go, yeah, yeah, that's well, that's well worth it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's I mean it, if it was a 10 year old, it'd probably be a little bit under 200, but I mean mm-hmm. it's, it's 13, it's you know, it's a little bit older. That lovely mid-50s proof. Um I I know what you mean by that peanut note. Like I get like a hazelnutty peanut note, and it's got that lovely texture to it. Yeah, it's just got that. It's almost like um, yeah, the roasted roasted shell. Mm. It's like a roasted shell, and then that. I don't want to say nutty, not and not because they call they've got nuts in their their description here, but it is. I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like that nut, that nut profile. Yeah, hazelnut, something, something mm. around that that roasted nut element. I'm trying this with the shapes, chicken chicken crimpy shapes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go dangerous. I'm gonna have the pizza shapes. Hey. <laughs> So you don't have any of the – you didn't give us any of the bacon ones. Have you had those bacon shapes, bacon no. ones? Oh, my God, barbecue bacon or whatever they're called. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> All right. So I've had my pizza shape. Mm. I cannot smell anything. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the smell's vanished, has it? <laughs> Damn you, pizza shape. <laughs> Damn you, pizza shapes. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's got all the texture. It's got no flavour. Got no flavour with those pizza shapes, but it still holds the texture in the mouth. It's a bit hot in the back because of it. Mm, all right. I need to go back and neutralise my palate a bit. Give me one of those honey. Chicken crimpy, yeah. So dove went and chicken crimpy as well. I think, mm. yeah. Okay. Chicken cream. You know my favorite my favorite flavor in all of these kind of snacks when you think about it is chicken flavored anything. Cuz it doesn't taste like chicken. I was going to say it tastes nothing like, like chicken. <laughs> so, so you just call it chicken. Wherever flavored. they get this from, it's not chicken. <laughs> not chicken. <laughs> it's just sort of a salty umami sort of flavor I guess, but it's it's got a very particular sort of it's like chicken salt. Chicken, chicken salt doesn't taste like chicken. All right, here we go. Yeah. Oh, no, that's original. Yeah, mint, you know, mini, mini crispy, mm. mini crispy chicken. See, these ones aren't, aren't over-seasoned. Sometimes they're really heavily seasoned. Mm. Do you, I, I don't know if that's – is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I opened a packet of corn chips the other day that were so heavily seasoned. Oh, like the cheesy yeah. corn chip flavor was all over them, and I was like, "That was fantastic." I love when corn chips are over seasoned. Yeah, that goes with the, that. That well, it goes better. It goes better with the chicken. Mm. It goes better with the chicken. I just wonder what the um, the bready element, the doughy element of these biscuits. Like the one thing I haven't had is the Scotch finger. So I'm just wondering the Scotch finger might give I us reckon, a little bit. Well, I reckon the Scotch finger with the next whiskey mm-hmm. is the third one. I think it's going to be the trick. Oh, my God. It's so easy to drink all these in such a short amount of time. Well, yeah, that's why they're 30 mil. You don't have to pour all of them out. Oh, I know that. 
I know that. You know that. Right. Mm. Mm. Just looking. Yeah. Try. Mm. 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 All right, that's pretty damn good. I reckon we need to move on though. Mm. I'll throw I'll throw that one up on screen just once more for everyone to see. There's the there's the QR in case anyone needs a bottle of that. And by need, I mean need. I mean this is it's, it's a very, very it's a very good whiskey. And that's one of those whiskeys where it's like it's you would don't sleep on it kind of thing. Like it's it's one of those purely textural lovely whiskeys that is just a showcase of how good the Highland region and yep. juicy oak and vanilla can be. Yep. You wouldn't be disappointed lead- with that. No, no. In fact, I didn't even say the distillery name, and that sort of gives it away a little bit. If you can zoom in on that one, here we go. Da, 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 da. There we go. But we don't say the distillery names in here, but that's what the distillery looks like for another sort of se- semi-aerial view, that one there. It is actually quite a stunning sight. They're lovely old pagoda roof there. Um, and they, they um, it's a very traditional setup, open-top mash tons, wooden washbacks, very small stills. Um yeah, very firm, nutty, heavy style of spirit that they produce there and predominantly goes into ex-bourbon casks. In these well, I was going to say, I think we sort of forgot to mention a little bit, this is second fill as well, so mm. hence why we don't get a lot of those fruit notes that ex-bourbon mm. casks normally give because it's it's already gone through. It's like second pressing in olive oil. You don't want second mm. pressing, you want first pressing, right? Yep, yep, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, whatever, exactly, yeah. You know what, Uh, here's a question. Here's a question for you, right? Okay. Um, Now, because we talk second fill bourbon, Mm. we Mm. automatically assume, now this is, as you were saying, this is white Mackay Mm. sort of family, yeah? So there's no guarantee that being a second fill bourbon barrel means it's actually second fill coming from this distillery. It could be coming from one of the other ones. Exactly. And not just one of their other ones, it could be coming from anywhere, really, because mm-hmm. you order these casks from the cooperage, mm. and they, they come from a multitude of sources, mm-hmm. and it's usually they'll let you know it's had peated or unpeated spirit in it before it. Yep. So it's um it's uh, sometimes, you know, we do promote when you see that the, the cask has had a, an additional maturation in a X society cask. Finish. Yeah, or finish or an extra mat, whatever you yeah. want to use. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, um you know, in this case, it's, we don't know what that first fill was. It, it may have been the same distillery. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it may have been a society yeah, cast ninety four point two four. So it's it's uh, it's no way of knowing for sure. That's a good point. It is a good point. And as we said before, refill casks are amazing and are an amazing way to discover the spirit in such a fantastic way because you get to discover that lovely distillate pushing through that second fill oak, which is just mm-hmm. lovely. All right. 149.4, a tasty morsel. So this is the... This, this is the is one the, that with the, uh, either the... Probably the Scotch Finger, actually. This this is the moment uh, uh, we can throw in a Derbage uh, comment. Uh, oh, yeah? Such a look at the colour. Look at the colour. This is quite dark for, for a... Uh, well, oh. yeah, uh, not first... Well, I don't know how to explain it. They say first fill uh, Spanish PX, but yeah, but it's not. It's it's dark for the nature of the profile, I guess. But color wise, for a for a PX, for a PX yeah. it's not. No, it's not super dark for PX, is it? Yeah. Um, in the glass or in the sample, they both. You know, it's just got that lovely golden hue to it, but it's not exactly yeah. dark, dark. It's tinted. It's tinted. It's tinted with that element of orange, I guess you could say, to it. Yeah, a sort of orange oil to sort of tint to it. Yeah, but, but it's um, it's very um, it, it is full maturation. This one, by the way, it's no additional or extra finish or anything. This is full six years in a first fill ex Spanish oak PX butt, so ex Pedro Jimenez uh, sherry butt for six years, uh, and then this one falls into the juicy oak and vanilla as well. So if you do have a sample of the previous dram, 94.25, and put it side by side with this, that's a nice sort of comparison between two casks in the same flavor profile, but very, very different mm. whiskey. Yep, yep. This is this one is so like – now this is uh, – we're talking about 94 before, but this one for me is a textural masterclass. It's like it's just 
so thick. It's like lanolin. It's like fresh pine. Strawberries. Don't about the strawberries, but I definitely agree with those first two. Lanolin. Tough, like t- yeah, lanolin. Like thick. Like, and yeah. by the way, how cute are these? Look at these. Look how small the little scotch fingers are. <laughs> no, I've never seen these before. These are great. Micro scotch fingers. That's very cute. That is, you can taste the oak in that. Mm. You can taste the oak. You can also taste the distillate, though. I mean, it's, it's... Mm. But the wood is there. The wood is there. Tessual's a bit dry, dry on the back, a little bit dry on the back. Mm. Scotch fingers, you reckon? You reckon we can break these in half? <laughs> if you uh, can, show on camera. Come on. Broke, show on camera, you're trying to break that in half. Here we go. It broke. <laughs> oh, look at this. Hey. Yeah, whatever. In half. Right. Work. That's hmm. the thing about the Arnott's. It's like a shortbread. Shortbread, not shortbread. This one is also hotter, says Dov. It's about five ish percent ABV bigger. Dov, so that's that's certainly going to contribute. It's um the but have uh, a look at just how oily it is. It's just it's very t- it's very thick spirit. Scotch finger makes it makes it hotter. Mm. Scotch finger makes it hotter. Yeah, right. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try barbecue. I'm going go barbecue. Go barbecue. Yes, go barbecue chefs. This one, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> mm. A lot of herbs on that barbecue. Here we go. <laughs> A few herbs on that sausage, huh? Mm-hmm. Makes it, it keeps the oil. Mm. Makes it go. Ooh, makes it go bitter. No, oh, don't recommend. <laughs> Do not recommend. Mm, not with the barbecue, anyway. <laughs> I'll go back to the chocolate chip. That's huh? what the ch- chocolate does. So um, a bit a bit of background on this uh, particular distillery for all playing along at home, Distillery 149. There it is. It's a pretty modern-looking site because it is. It was founded in 2014. Um, so this, this cask was filled in there literally the second year of operation, really the 2016, third year of operation. Um, and uh, it is from the team behind Adelphi, uh, who we are good friends with over at SMWS, and they are, uh, are built their own distillery in 2014 here, the Ardenamurkin Distillery. Uh, and I'm saying the name of the distillery I know in this case because I think it's – yeah, yeah. I, because – well, actually, what I was going to say, I've kind of destroyed myself here. Mm. But what I was going to say is that um, – to give a clue of where this distill, what which distillery it is, we say that it's a distillery located on the far, far, far western peninsula. In, in fact, it's on the Ardnamurkin coast. We can say, without saying the distillery name. We already said the distillery name. I oh, know. I'm saying I really <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I was. Oh. I was not. I was not a um, not a fan in any respect with the initial releases of this distillate. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely not. It was. Oh, you mean the AD, like the AD 2016, those like yep. new make sort of things, those pre-whiskey yep. releases. Yeah, they weren't yep. much chop. They yep. weren't much chop. I think their core range, the single malt they've put out since, mm-hmm. is, is actually quite good. Yep. Um, yep. But I think those those AD releases, they just they were just new make. They were new make out yep. of octaves. Just, too early. Too early. Way too early. Well, I mean, it was you know, it built sort of a bit of hype, maybe, and a bit of um, I don't know. Yeah, I think that, I think yeah, I think it, look, it's always nice to try that stuff, um, but you really got to be trained in the knowledge of of new make spirit to really appreciate uh, that type of stuff to to know where it's it's going and stuff like. That. I, I just I I still found it very very difficult uh, to deal with it. I just didn't. I'm just like nope, nope. Mm-hmm. But it was good spirit, clean, you know, everything was there, but profile-wise. So this is interesting. This is interesting. But obviously uh, society's got a very uh, 
keen interest or they wouldn't have uh, bottled so early. Not bottled so early, uh, barreled so early. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a great relationship with the distillery. Mm. Uh, I think we've been um, laying down spirit from them since pretty much their first week of runs. I mean, yep. we've been a huge supporter of theirs, and I think we're going to – we actually – well, I can I can reveal now we're going to see a few more 149s through, including April Malt of the Month, which is 149.7, mm-hmm. um, coming up in a couple of weeks, and – uh, the one and the and there's another 149 further down the track, like June, which we're also very excited to taste. So look, it, and it's getting older and older as well as we're going mm-hmm. on, obviously, because I think the next one we're seeing is a seven year old, and then we've got an eight year old, and I think there'll be a nine or a ten soon. Uh, although I mean, there'll be a ten year old spirit this year coming out of the distillery because they were founded in 2014. So um, yeah, I think it shows you can. I don't know. You can tell in the. Even though it's six years old, it's six years for Scotland, which isn't exactly old. Is no. you can you can see a lot of those flavor relationships. Like it it's it still needs its time. Mm. Um, it's like those young Australians, those two and a half, three years old. Yeah, they go for all this flavor, but there is just that thing in the background, and you just go, the oak's not ready yet. Something's not ready yet. Um, but this has got so much texture to it, and it's fine, and it's clean. Mm. Yeah, it's it's very clean. I mean, it, it's a fascinating spirit still. And it's and it, I think it's cool to taste it and how it's mm. progressed and what it's doing. It's not drinking at sixty one percent either. It does no, not. It, it's it very not. integrated, yeah. very well integrated for its mm. uh, for its age and its proof. Mm. Trying to what are the? I haven't even read the tasting notes. What are they saying? Are they. So the uh, panel say it's yeah, a bit of soft vanilla, um, fresh cut pine trees, gentle spices, a bit of sea salt, and then uh, further down it has you know new baked potatoes with a seaweed mayonnaise dip. I don't mind that as a tasting note. It's quite interesting. Mm. Uh, sparkling Galliano cocktail, grenadine, Galliano champagne, cucumber Galliano. sauce. Creamy, salty, and sweet on the palate. The tasty morsel. I think that's what I'm looking for, that little bit of licorice. Licorice mm. element. Yeah, a little bit licorice maybe, yeah. But I, I, Adam on our team was was remarking on just how much he loved the texture of this whiskey as well mm-hmm. and just had this like this very thick mouth-coating style of spirit to it. Mm. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, by the way, it's also exciting to taste something this like this and, and see what the new world of Scotch whiskey is looking like in some ways. We, you know, this is this is new Scotch whiskey. Like we're we're mm. constantly tasting whiskey from distilleries that have been founded in the seventeen and eighteen hundreds. Always, yeah. yeah. Everything from your Bamors and Linkwoods and whatever of the world, and then then suddenly you get to taste something that's from twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. It's like that's cool. That's cool. Like yeah. the, you get to taste the, the the new wave, which is by the way, I'll show I'll throw it on the screen again. That front label, it is a special label release it's celebrating the new wave of distilleries with the original master Bob Dewar. So Bob Dewar is the guy who painted the ceilings in the vaults, um, and he's a. So it's one of those labels that's celebrating that that series. So all these labels that we've seen in the last twelve months of this these these artwork labels have been mm-hmm. celebrating the um, uh, the new wave of distillery. So we're seeing a whole bunch of new codes coming through with these labels, mm-hmm. which is great. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, you went with shapes, but you don't think that worked. And I went with no. Scotch finger, which I think worked quite well. I'm going to go another Scotch finger. Mm. I think rum's going to be a uh, – <laughs> rum's yeah. going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, oh, well, it's 23 well. years old, though. I did not notice that. Did not notice that. Yeah, this rum is pretty special stuff. So we're already talking about it, so I might move on to it. Oh, we don't have to. I just, yeah. I was no, just... no, it, it's it's a good goodest time as ever um, for those playing along. The R13.4, one of 222 bottles. There it is on the screen. Caribbean rum, bizarre, bonkers, and brilliant. 23 years uh, in a first fill ex bourbon barrel. This is, by this is the best way to describe this rum is that, first of all, this distillery, this Caribbean distillery, uh, is um, what's the word? Sorry, why am I saying anyway? This Trinidadian distillery, I should say, um, is uh, the basically what Port Ellen is to whiskey, this is to rum, 
And I mean that it's a comp- – I'll show you what the distillery looks like currently. Ready? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely gone. It's a rusted old shed these days. It doesn't exist anymore. This is a completely closed distillery. Uh, it, it was basically – it was uh, Velier and um, Luca Gargano who revived the – what was called the mania around what was going on with this spirit. Need a fresh glass for this one. Um, and, you know, really brought this to life. And it is the epitome of what was called a, a, an old naval, a naval dark rum. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh. I don't drink a lot of rum. Like, I, I do like rum. I actually really like it as a spirit. Just that it's it's not regularly in my glass. I mean, whiskey's regularly in my glass, but I, I do love rums, and I love the different types. How you have some rums that are really light. I mean, don't mean light and proof. I mean, like, like obviously you've got white rums and dark rums, but like you've got that light sort of agricoli style ones, like R elevens, like you see out of, and then and then you get these these style ones, which is the opposite, which is that sort of naval style, and then you get the third type, which is that sort of more sort of sugary forward sort of Guianese style. I reckon yeah, it's got that. Tees, maybe or something. It's 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 certainly, um, I guess, showing its age in that it's losing a lot of that texture that rums tend to have mm. in their younger form. It still carries that sort of plastic note. Um, that um, oh, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like it's it's just that typical plasticky note that some rums tend to have. Mm. Well, yeah, that's that agricoli note, that plasticky mm. agricoli acetone note that you often get off a, a younger rum. Yeah. But this one carries a bit more. Um, but do you get like a – I love – I get this like salted mortadella note on this, like salty mortadella, a little bit meaty, a little bit – um, Yeah, meaty. Yeah, that, that cheese, I guess. But a bit of like old – like the old metal toolbox – Old mechanics workshop, oily mm-hmm. rags, oily rags. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. gonna say oily, oily rags, rags. Like, something like that. A, a car service that's about a year overdue. Yeah, sort of like oil stained concrete, something or other. Just yeah, carries oil stained concrete. Carries yeah, yeah. Mm. love it. But I love that it's it's like it's like tasting an old like an old Campbelltown whiskey, like a twenty thirty year old Campbelltown whiskey. Um, there's an oil. That is used when doing some, um, my father used to use it when he used to do his, um, all his uh, machining of uh, different tools mm. on the lathe. So um, instead of using water, it's an oil on that. And it just gives me that sense of that, that oil in those, those metal shavings together. Metal shavings, yeah. mm. um, we've had two, we've got two viewers right now watching in live who've both said, Dovers had pizza shapes are great with the run, I think. Ooh. And Betty Petrie's greed and said pizza shapes, for sure. I um, totally forgot about the chips. Yeah. Go. <laughs> I was by the rum. rum. <laughs> yeah, I was entranced by the rum. Sorry, I forgot about the snacks. Uh, we got rum that shapes. Is, as an entrancing rum, though, I've poured that whole sample for myself because that's just uh, – I'm, I'm not going to come back to that. So. Oh, oh yeah. Mechanics workshop sort of thing going on, a little bit of like – Emphasizes emphasizes the workshop. Yeah, so, those chips, biscuits. And, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pizza, pizza shapes. All right. I'm going to chicken. Need chicken. Oh, Tennessee wants one too. We you know, can get You'll see if he's on the picture. Can you see him? Here you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Good boy. <laughs> he's stuck in here, and Pepper's out in the other room. So um, he's getting so, the snacks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dog snacks, dog snacks time. Yeah, we should have included some dog snacks in this pack. Yeah, we could, we could have put some schmackos or something, seeing how they went. <laughs> All it takes is one person to eat the schmackos and, and get complain, though. I tell you, those things smell great. They they taste like nothing. <laughs> Done it. You know from personal experience? Well, it's like, why are you dogs loving this stuff? And it's like, I don't get it. Hmm. <laughs> But some some biltong would have been nice. That would have been nice to include. That could have worked. Yeah, biltong would have worked as well. Yeah. Oh. Now that goes with the chicken. I'm saying it goes with the chicken. My call's the chicken. The crimpies? My call is the chicken over the pizza. 
All right, I'm going to try that with the crimpies. It's okay to be wrong, remember, but <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> all, all opinions are valid except those who are wrong. I'm just going to turn my fan on. It's getting a bit warm in here. Oh. Mm. Um, Paul Bailey, someone here, uh, Paul, mate, I think we've met. This is, um, I said you were probably family. Here we go. Honey snacks with the rum. Bailey's are the best, aren't they? Honey snacks with the rum. Honey snacks with the rum. Mm. Here we go. Uh, like honey teddy. Honey teddy. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I think that rum just works with just about anything, doesn't it? That's great. And three options well, so far, and everyone's enjoying them. That's the thing with cast strength whiskies. They can really hold up to any food, mm. including chili. That's true. Yeah. As we've experienced. Including hot, yeah, the, the, the chip. So, we don't forget the chip. The one chip challenge. The one chip challenge. That was good. That was very good. I love how much milk and stuff we had ready at this on, on the go. Uh, ice creams, <laughs> you know, you know, ice cream and milk, and <laughs> I was sweating from the eyes. My pupils were sweating. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's uh, honey. Oh, the honey goes as well mm. for sure. Yeah, honey and chicken. Or well, honey chicken. Maybe I can do a honey chicken combo. Let's do it. Honey chicken combo. Yeah, Paul, we met. I think we met at Whiskey Rump. Abbey, Paul. I think it was Both either Whiskey Abbey or something. It was a festival, one of the festivals. We've, we're doing a lot of festivals of late, which has been great. Oh. This is Queensland Malt Whiskey Expo. We've got Whiskey and Dreams coming up. This is a rum, not a whiskey. Yeah, Dov, I know. I mean, this is a rum, not a whiskey, but like car strength. I mean, I think what Will is trying to say is that, you know, like, Car strength spirit hold up much better to pairings. Mm. You know, often when you have food that's with like lower proof whiskies, the food Absolutely. completely overwhelms your palate. Like yep. the, the flavors from food, or even even mild things like biscuits and and mm -hmm. snack, you know, fall apart. And that's the whole idea of unusual pairings is that you wouldn't mm. have thought to pair up chicken crimpy shapes with a seven hundred dollar rum, but yep. here we are. That's why the whiskey and donuts is going to be a very interesting event. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's just about sold out. We had a couple of tickets here and there, but mm -hmm. we're excited for that for that happening, you yep. guys. And um, oh, she's been working as as you saw the photos. Oh, she's been mm. working with the chefs, and so instead of us having a donut cut in half to share, they're now doing the half, a half size donut, full 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 format, but mm. it's half size. So that means we're not we're not cutting the donuts in half. Everyone's got a complete experience. So five different donuts. It's going to be cool. It's going to be good. But I had some samples friendly. again last night. No, I reckon if it's really popular, if it's really popular, the Sydney one, if it goes really well, the pairings. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's no is, guarantee. There's no guarantee about that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, no guarantee, no guarantee. <laughs> That's if, people love the pairings, if people have a great night, uh, we'll send Wooler up to Queensland to do it in Queensland as well. Why not? That'd yeah, right. Cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> Got to somehow get the donuts there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what carry on luggage is for. Oh, yeah, right. How many? Of, how many am I carrying? Come uh, on. Yeah, well, that, that's why you got your wagon. That's why you can just okay, just drive up Over, overnight in a uh, in a, um, a a fridge. Well, yeah, we'll just hire a fridge truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just load it up. This event keeps getting cheaper and cheaper by the minute. This, keeps, <laughs> this is great fun. It's great fun. No, a fridge truck. Why don't we just hire a, a limo whilst we're at it as well? Just yeah, well, well, if you need to get cold things all over the country, and I'm happy to drive all over the country to do this, we we will need a a, a society branded fridge truck. Mm, that's fair. Yeah, a little bit like what uh, Will and Grant and Sons do with the bus. Oh, and yeah. I beg you with the tractor, and we'll just have a society fridge truck. And don't forget the uh, <laughs> don't forget the, the the monkey shoulder cement mixer. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, full of full of monkey shoulder, you know. Well, if if we were to like, we could refrigerate a hearse, so we could have like a society hearse. <laughs> <laughs> the 
They do come up for sale. You can you can actually buy hearses. I've I've, I've seen them before. And tonight is the launch of Ghostbusters. Is and it? Yes, it is. I'm sitting. There. I should be there at the launch, but I'm here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate it. <laughs> you can still make you can make the late session. You can make the midnight uh, premiere screening tonight. I could, I could, I could, but I've drunk a lot of whiskey, so I'm not getting there. Ah, taxi, taxi. Like I said, costs keep spiraling. Just get just get a private taxi. There you go. I'm going to save some of this rum for later. Mm, okay. Got to save some of it. That's that fun. rum is still available, folks. I'm just going to throw that back up on screen. Boom! There's your QR. If you want to grab grab on that rum. Um, it, it's it's unbelievable that we even get access to these kind of casks because this is a 23 year old demolished distillery rum mm. uh, that just has this strangely alluring sort of old world charm to it. And Do you know I, if there's any product that is still hitting the market outside of society on this rum? You the occasion okay, so the occasional we've seen the occasional like 30 uh, mm-hmm. 30 year old from this distillery. Yep, uh, appear on market through some obscure uh, European bottler, uh, mm. and they command something like five, six thousand euros per bottle. And from everything I've heard, they're not actually not very good. They're kind of a bit over the hill, a bit like tasting forty-year-old yep. Port Ellen. You go, yeah, it was better when I was a twenty-year-old. Um, you know, when did this distillery shut down? I think they. I think it was like last run was like. 2005 or something. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think it was 05, somewhere around there. I'd have to check. My, I'd have to fact check that. And what made him shut up shop? Maybe it's 2002. Um, oh, all sorts of problems with. I think it was to do mostly with um, lack lack of um, lack of sales and 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 oversupply of rum at the time. And um, you know, it, a lot of those a lot of those naval rum sort of runs sort of did fall apart when naval contracts also dried up. You know, so mm. it's like they, if they we didn't have massive defense force contracts to send the rum to, then it was like, well, well who are we producing it for? Um, yep. But this, I'm not sure on the reason why they closed in the in these guys. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was. I can't remember why. Yeah, why it closed? It'd be, you know. Feel free to make something up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Really I don't know. Idea. I think it was mostly. I mean, a lot of the also there was a lot of rum distilleries at the time that they they failed to um, keep up with mechanization and industrialization yeah. of their plant, and yeah. it's like, well, it's it's costing us a lot per liter to to build these the, to build this spirit to build this um rum, and it's like, well, mm-hmm. you're competing with rum distilleries that are putting in modern equipment, and we're talking about you know everything from Trinidad Tobago Guyanese Jamaican rum distilleries that. <laughs> You know that the start start especially like distilleries like Worthy Park, where they're a much younger yeah. distillery and they can and they put you know have a lot more mechanization um, around it. Um, but mm-hmm. it's also a lot of it would have been political. They would have sold chunks of the distillery off to people, or uh, government would have come in and gone, "Well, your price per ton of cane has doubled," and um, you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Trinidad and okay, yeah. just looking at where they are on the map. Fascinating story behind them, like fascinating story. But um, yeah, well, we might move on to number number five in our in our sets here. Okay, right there we are. So yeah. I'm just seeing I'm seeing where they were in relationship to Haiti because Haiti has completely collapsed as a country in the last couple of days. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Haiti's been going through some going through some stuff, haven't they? Yeah, no, they're 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 over. Effectively, they have no government. Right that's now, always that's always fun. Yeah. Okay, they're down the they're down the bottom end of the chain of islands. So yeah, not even close. Oh yeah, Venezuela, oh. sure. Kiana. beware of the Reaper Chili. Okay, so, let's do it. Let's do it. We're finishing on something heavily peated. Sixty-four percent. Mm-hmm. No slouch. This one, no slouch. 64.0, 262 bottles were yielded from the entire hogshead, which is pretty standard for a hoggy, and then um, eight years in a refill, char- recharred, refill, recharred hogshead. Now, is this normal for this distillery to be peating? 
They it is. They do a petered run at the distillery. I think it's I think it's one full run per month. Right. Um, that's yep. Okay. So unlike you know some distilleries like uh, you know Bunahaven or um, Kalila and others that do or in many yep. distilleries in the in the mainland even that do one petered week a year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. These guys that do a regular petered run um, and a and have were for a long time. This distillery, I won't, won't say it. The, this distillery, Distillery Sixteen, um, was for the very longest time part of uh, Edrington Group and was an integral part of uh, Famous Grouse. Mm. So, um, but it, it, the, one of their claims is that they are the oldest operating distillery in Scotland. Uh, it's a very hard claim to actually mm. lay, lay down because it's they they have a very checkered history like many distilleries and you know when they actually record keeping in the 1700s was not much good, but they they claim that their first run was uh, as an illicit distillery was 1775, which makes this one of the oldest distilleries operating in Scotland, if not the oldest currently operating distillery. But it's not the oldest distillery ever in Scotland or anything like that. Anyone can say illicit distillery though, and there's no records. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorites, I think, is, is Distillery Thirty. I think it's thirty-five. Distillery Thirty-five for us, which ever members love, and I know, and I know, I love as well. But it's like Distillery Thirty-five is like, <laughs> I think it's that one where it's like it says like, uh, oh no, 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 it may have been Distillery Four. Sorry, Distillery Four in Orkney, which was like uh, founding, like a, oh, started started distilling in seventeen seventy six, and then it says. Started distilling in 1832. <laughs> again, it's like, uh, oh, okay, you're starting again. It's just a just a 50 year gap of history that no one wants to talk about. It's like, oh yeah, what happened those 50 years? I don't know. You know someone, don't boiled, ask. someone boiled some alcohol accidentally on their stove. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 look at that! 50, breathe, 50 years of in the vapor. <laughs> oh, it must no. have been distilling. <laughs> 50 years of accidental distilling. No, no, I was listen to distilling. <laughs> I, 50 years of I just left the stove on, honey. I'm sorry. You know, you know, so. um, no, this is 16.72. Be, beware the Reaper Chili, uh, a heavily peated profile. Um, it says on the front there, aromas of malt extract, mechanics oily rag, peat singed pineapples pieces. Uh, none yep. could prepare us for the taste of the Carolina Reaper Chili Pepper. What defines the society mm. to decide this is heavily peated? How did how do they split all the different panel? Different? It's all just panel. Like the panel yeah. just has a line and go, that's really that's quite heavily peated. And I think it's 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 quite a peated pardon me, the spirit run is quite heavily peated. And so out of a refill recharge hoggies, uh refill recharge. I think it's just a recharge hogs head. I don't know why it says refill on the menu. That's my mistake. Um Mm. But it's kind of it's, it is a bit rustic. This spirit, it's I get like like pork belly. I get a yeah, bit of bit of leather. Like yeah, it's got leather. um, it's got that burnt fat, mm. burnt charred yeah. fat element about it. I would like um a uh, speck or something like that, and as yeah. well, it's got that that dense fat, but it's also then been charred. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go down the route of saying that this is heavily peated on the nose, but I can imagine probably hitting it with a bit of water mm. would really bring out that that smoke element. It's almost like you can smell the malt in it. I you can you can smell it. It's almost it's mm. you well you're very, close to the like distillate. A, you're very close to the the, the distillate here. <laughs> see, look, it's, it's yeah look that that smells almost like this packet of Scotch finger biscuits. Without eating them, it's like that is so close in mm. on the nose. So close. That's not going to work if I eat one of those. They're too close. <laughs> uh, what do you reckon? I, I think the chicken. I'm doing the chicken. I am doing the chicken. I'm going to go the, although the herbs and the pizza might work. I'm doing the I've chicken. Had, I've had a great question here from um, my brother from another mother, Paul Bailey here. Um, I'm just going to answer this question. Do you know the PPM? Now, Paul's referring to the parts per million, the peating level that's stated for this distillate. Now, the correct answer is about 80, 80, which is if you think that's there's huge. If, yeah, that's huge. That's a very that's chunky huge. PPM. In fact, that's some of the biggest out there. Um, if you've got 
Like, you know, uh, it's, Ardbeg is 55. Um, Lagavulin is 35 these days. Yeah. So, you know, 80 is is massive. Um, however, mm-hmm. I just really want to stress this point. This is my little rant for tonight. I promise my only one. Um, PPM is probably the worst indicator mm-hmm. of measuring peat and measuring how big a small mm-hmm. smoke your whiskey is. Mm-hmm. Worst now, you'll notice, you'll notice. Absolutely. In, in the whiskey trade, there's only one distillery that uses PPM as a real sales tactic for their whiskeys. We won't say which Isla distillery this is and, and which um, black, black bottle, which black bottle you're talking black about. Bottles they put their spirit in. But why? I mean, the, the PPM varies wildly as to where it's measured and, and how it's measured. Mm-hmm. So is it measured at the peat source when they're cutting it and drying it, or is it measured? at the new make or is it measured at the final product or is it measured in the cask? Mm-hmm. All of this, it, it doesn't, that number really doesn't tell us much about the flavor of the whiskey. And, mm-hmm. I, and I know that's not your question. It wasn't about flavor. It was about PPM. The correct answer is 80, but I just don't really rely 80, on PPM. But he's actually it. saying who cares? Cause it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm. It, it doesn't give you any, uh, it doesn't tell you any story. Um, but it can, if you know the right context, it's a little bit like when we talk about, a uh, Lagavulin and that transition from 50 ppm to 35, 36 back in the mid 90s. Yep. The bottles that we were drinking back in the late sort of 2008, 2009 were just like a dry bushfire. Yep. And then overnight changed. Yeah. It became sweeter uh, and less of that smoke element was appearing. So clearly there can be significant change mm. depending on what's going on. And where they're measuring it, because we don't know where they're measuring it, like you were saying. No, we don't know where they measure it, and um, mm-hmm. and, and uh, it's even if the measurement is at the peatiest point, it, like it's like okay, we measured it three times, it came out once at fifty-seven, once at seventy-two, and once at eighty. We'll we'll put the we'll go with the eighty. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. it really at this point we're talking about a marketing tactic rather than a flavor tactic, which is which is perfectly fine. But it's it's just one of those things where you say the number doesn't actually tell you anything, and so. I would rely more on flavor profile and what you enjoy. So if you see heavily peated and you go, I really like my big peated whiskeys. And I've had I've had big peated whiskeys that have been like 35 ppm that have actually tasted and nosed as much peatier than ones that are like 100 mm-hmm. ppm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really feel even even side by side. You go, okay, well, this is not the same thing. Um, anyway, I like, I'm sorry, I'm getting my high horse about this. Um, no, no, no. It's um, and it's like as many have discovered with the older. Um, society heavily peated whiskies mm. that get into those 20 year old range, 25 year old ranges. The smoke's gone, it's yeah. gone, yeah, yeah, right? exactly. And and peated whiskies really show their character in the younger ages in regards to sweetness and smoke. They hit that 10 to 15 year old mark, it's then just becoming more, well, ooh, more like smoky element, breezy, smoky elements. And then as they get older, it's just earthier. Disappearing. It's all going. Yeah. Mm. There's a point where it's almost pointless to even talk about it. Well, I mean, eight, eight years old, it's perfect because it's like that's mm-hmm. that's a that's going to be big peak because it's young whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But you know, as Matt and I know, I mean, we've t- we've both tasted 25, 30 year old peated whiskeys, and it's like if yeah, there's still sl- the slightest whiff of like old smoke in there but it's mm. it's much more sweet the the cask lignans yep. and tannins have have leached far deeper yep oaks and taking it, over yeah mm. the, the oaks taken over in in many cases and um yeah it, it's a very different beast and peated whiskey is one of the most misunderstood categories i still think today um look at the way most australian uh distillers uh peat their whiskey they've mm. already the malt has already been dried they're wetting the malt again and then they're burning a small, a, a, a minimal amount. And that's the other thing. It's like from the experience I have seen, because I've never done it myself, but seen through so many Australian distillers is that they need to peat such a small volume of malt mm. to add to the mix uh, because they're peating after malting has occurred is that it's, it's just attaching itself to the husks complete. Um, and it becomes an extremely smoky whiskey, even though they've actually haven't done that much at all. It's like the yeah. techniques are, are different depending on what's going on, what you're using to smoke as well. 
that's another that's another element. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's a whole different world. It's 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 fun to talk about. It's fun to experience. Um, and you can even talk about, uh, let's say in Scotland, mainland peat versus Isla peat. Yeah, it's a very hugely so. Well. Yeah, hugely so. Like you know that. That main that sort of yeah that mainland style of peat which is this one this is a this is a, this is a Highland whiskey mm-hmm. um, versus that Isla style I always find as a general rule not always the case but as a general rule, the Highland style is much more sort of like clean white smoke and mm-hmm. like ash whereas like with the Isla style I get much more of that sort of boggy damp wet cardboard tarry yep. rope style so yep. yeah it's, it's, you know, it, it it changes between both very you know quite a bit as well. Um. All right. What do we think? I reckon we did. You it was the only we haven't tried here. The tiny Teddy's chocolates that I think got tried. I'm not sure. No, I, I didn't open the tiny Teddy chocolates. I opened everything else. Yeah. Um. And I think the um, the chicken is the most versatile in For sure. Um. But my favorite whiskey is still the ninety four two five. Mm. An absolute nutter. That's um. I'll throw that up on screen real quick for everyone. Mm. He's uh, Matt Willis' favorite whiskey. There's a scan for it if you need one. Um, they're available on the site. In fact, everything you've tasted tonight is available oh. on the site. You know what? Even going back, I'm I'm not tasting. I'm just nosing the glass after that Peter whiskey. Mm. It smells even better. <laughs> That's so cool. That's great. Yeah. Mm. Um. It is cool to get casks like this 16.72, though, I've got to say. Um, this is quite mm. a – people forget, this is quite a small distillery. Um, and it, it's a very small output. Um, they are focusing, again, on their single malts, uh, which have a core range out in the market now. I think there's like five or six different SKUs in that core range um, from a 12 and a 15 and a triple wood and things like that. Um, but, yeah, it – to see a single cask of their peated run, which is their lesser seen run, uh, without saying the distillery name, I can tell you the name of the peated run they use. They use a, a phrase called Red Moor or Red Moor, which is means their peated run. Um, now you, 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 quite often when this distillery pops up, mm. from my recollection, it usually sits in the spicy and sweet category as well. Is that correct? Yeah. We we also saw a deep rich and dried fruits from sixteen a, a couple of years ago. Um, it was like and it was a little bit older. This the, the deep rich and dried fruits one. I think it was like an eighteen or nineteen year old whiskey from memory, and was just so weird. That has to be one of the weirdest whiskeys I've ever tasted. It was like a glass of Serrano ham. That was just like straight up fresh cut ham in the glass. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it was weird. It was like okay, that what is in my glass kind of moment. Um, and members loved it. In fact, uh, I'm going to reference one of our members, Liam Smee, I think, got a bottle of that because he raved about it when it came out as well. Liam. Um, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're talking about you, Liam, on stream, <laughs> live. <laughs> this, um, now that I've, I've had this, I've let it rest for a little bit. I've eaten a little bit more of those uh, chicken shapes. This, mm. um, have you ever had the, like, uh, peppermint chili chocolate before? Mm. Mm. That's what it reminds me of. Peppermint mm. chili chocolate. Mm. That's lovely. I'm going to pull the rest of mm. mine out. That could be a good Easter dram. Mm. Easter Sunday, 7 a.m., some, uh, some milk chocolate eggs and a glass of uh, Reaper chili. Well, I'm finished the bottle, so that's... Evidence enough. Oh, mm. it gets better. That gets absolutely better as your palate oh. adjusts. Mm. That's cool. That is, that cool. is cool. How much that is, is cool. that? That it's did you say there was like a mem- was that ninety nine dollars members discount? <laughs> now, <laughs> no, no, no one said that. No, <laughs> that's your oldest trick of the book. Come on, put that QR code up. I'm scanning. I'm ready. Okay, I'm you're, sure. you ready? You ready? You ready? Yeah. You ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. Get your phones out, folks. There it no, is. <laughs> Ninety-nine dollars. No one said that. No one said ninety-nine. In fact, I promise you, it's one seventy-nine, um, <laughs> which is actually very good value. Um, it is for a single casket at sixty-four percent. Hmm. Um, 
I've just quickly adjusted the QR there, uh, just the secondary copy on the QR, on the text on the QR, you can see on the screen now. There we go. It's uh, 179. Now, I normally, I will normally get 66s when they pop up. Not always. In the last year, things have been a bit tighter for me, but uh, I normally right, grab yeah. 66s, and they normally mm. sit in this price range. Yep. But um, this one's got some nice texture to it. It would, yep, it would, yeah. I would, I would put this along a 66 for sure. Yeah, for sure. These the Highland Peter whiskies are, are, are a massive, are just so, so much fun. I do love the 66 as well. The, the 66s are also dangerously easy to drink. Yes. Yes. No, uh, easy just to disappear. A, a bottle of Isla whiskey can last, you know, weeks on the shelf. I mm -hmm. slowly enjoyed months even, but, um, uh, yeah, a 66 just will vanish. All right. Well, um, Matt Wooler, thank you so much for tonight. It's been great taste no really and having some uh, some silly snacks along the way. That's what's well, nice good to be about. trying these without any any like I I didn't even open the box until we were just about to start. Mm. Um, so earlier the well not earlier about two hours ago I opened the box and put it, just set them up, mm. but uh, unopened. Haven't tried any of them yet, and that's cool. Yeah, it's great. Now, we were um, talking last week. Uh, are we seeing cognacs coming back? Well, we've got some, we've got some Armagnac coming through shortly, mm -hmm. um, and I think we've got some cognac a little bit later in the year, some, okay. some of the Cs coming through later in the year. But, yeah, we've got some okay. As coming through very shortly, though. Uh, and uh, I, I've thrown a few QR, QR slides up on screen tonight, but I'll throw one more just for because uh, Matt Wooler and Oshi are hosting Whiskey and Donuts coming up. There you go. There's that QR that you don't want to miss. Uh, if there's a, like I said, a couple of tickets left. I'm actually. I'm gonna I don't think there's six, dude. I thought there were two. Yeah, maybe two tickets left. Sorry, that it's been a couple of days ago. I'm gonna scan that myself. I'm gonna scan my own screen of my own QR code here just to see how many tickets are left. Um. Oh, it looks like there's one. Okay. There you go. Yeah, one ticket left. Anyway, that's gonna be if, really pop. That's uh, so. If someone's looking to get two. There's only one ticket left. If someone is actually looking to get two, let Matt mm. know because we can squeeze a chair in. We can squeeze a chair in if someone's getting two. Just shoot me a line. You know where to get me or, or give Susie mm -hmm. a buzz uh, on your business hours yeah. on 0299743046. And, uh, yeah. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Doll. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone who tuned in live. We had about 25, 28 people watching the whole time, which is great. And I know there were a lot more packs than that out in the wild, but great to see so many people tuning in and having a bit of fun with us tonight. Uh, we'll see you all for the virtual next virtual soon, which will be, of course, the April virtual, which I can't sneak out to you just yet. We've just locked it in today, but um, there's, there's more of that to come. But, of course, April is all about music and malts. And... Um, and we'll have uh, some more details to be coming soon. Did you say, was that Society Vodkas? No, no. The Society does not <laughs> bottle vodka. So just to, okay, that's, that's Matt's uh, tremendous second piece of misinformation tonight. Um, so that, that whiskey is not 99 and, it is, and we don't bottle vodka. Um, but uh, 15 uh, yeah. year old in the glass vodka. Yeah, it's it's been using it glass. It tastes yeah. exactly oh. the same. As it's got this <laughs> lovely, uh, lovely mellowness to it. It's, it's <laughs> a fifteen years of mellowing. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here to. Do, I'm just going to stay online long enough to to let everyone know that whatever Matt says from now on is is not <laughs> accurate in any way, shape, or form. Um, so, um, no, thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. We really do appreciate it. It's been great having so many members tune in and, and join us for this uh, strange journey into the uh, unusual pairings, which is what March has been all about. Thank you. We'll see you all soon. And, thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. Indeed. <laughs> we need some more of these chicken. <laughs> I'm almost out of the chicken ones. Mm.